Buck, happy birthday. How you doing today? I made another one. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, I am playing with house money right now. I'm keep, playing with house money. Keep your eyes open. We all chipped in in the studio and we bought you another dog. We figured <laughs> three wasn't enough. <laughs> uh, you know, we have to keep them quiet because, you know, Bassett's are real loud this time of day. Yeah, can, cannot interfere with what you're doing for the next few minutes here on the pregame. Hey, you share, your birthday shares the Major League debut of Mariano Rivera, and you were there for that. What do you remember about that? You know, he wasn't particularly good that day. Uh, you saw the breaking ball never was a good pitch for him. It's one of the reasons why we ended up with him in the bullpen. It was, I believe it was in Anaheim, and uh, it was... Uh, yeah, I guess it was Anaheim. Geez, I got a pretty good memory at 65, boys and girls. <laughs> so anyway, it really wasn't until he uh, pitched against the White Sox in a spot start. I think it was fifth or sixth outing where we all kind of looked around and go, wow, there's a little special fastball coming out. I'd love to see the spin rate and all the, the, the analytics on Mariano's fastball and the cutter. But uh, great kid. Hitters weren't uh, very comfortable off of him. He ended up making our playoff roster that year. And uh, believe me, he was the best birthday present I may have ever gotten. I wish I'd known then what I know now. Yeah, that debut in 1995 obviously launched a Hall of Fame career. But, Buck, let's shift back to today's game. Jamison Tyone is just trying to cement his place with the Yankees and in their rotation. What does Tyone need to do to join that starting rotation party? Well, Jack, you're on the same page as me. I think the secondary pitches, it's really going to be of utmost importance today because there are going to be five left-handed hitters in that lineup, three of which are switch hitters. So he's going to have to have a feel for the changeup day. I really believe it, or a plus breaking ball. And I think to get into attack mode regardless of the count, so many times it's 0-2, 1-2, and we quit attacking. You know, we have this advantage that we lose three pitches later. 0-2, 1-2, get in the zone and stay in the zone, and here's my stuff see what you can do with it but the change up with the left-handed hitter is going to be big today we've talked a lot about Gio Urshela lately and I don't know if you love comparisons but can you compare him to a player maybe that you managed you know you know what I I would say probably J.J. Hardy and it's about trust you know he's a guy you know is going to get a signal you know he's going to know where to throw the ball you know he's going to attempt to run the bases intelligently you know he's going to try to be a good teammate that's really all you're looking for you put a hit and run sign on with him well, first of all, they're probably not going to hit and run, but he's going to get the sign. He's going to put it in play, and it's not going to be beneath him to do something for the club. We talked a lot about him with the Orioles. But we tried to, to get him. You know, he went from being a kind of a utility player with Cleveland to hitting fourth for the New York Yankees. So he's got to be feeling pretty good about the trade, but, uh, you know, the people, powers to be, said they didn't think he would hit enough. Well, the Yankees were smart, and we weren't. Several times this season, Buck, Aaron Boone has talked about his lineup, and he has said, I could have put Wade in there, but I like him coming off the bench. I like him as a weapon. What kind of value does a player like Wade have for a manager? Well, he brings an above average tool to every game he plays in. He can, when you can put him anywhere on the field defensively and not take a step back, and a lot of cases take a step forward, I love the other night that they could bring him into a game in a potential bunt situation, not waste the out with a bunt, feeling confident that he can steal second base. Jack, he can't run. He can really run, and he wants to steal bases. A lot of guys who can run don't necessarily want to take the, the pounding or the risk involved in it. But this is a tool he brings, and he likes to bring it. But there's such a safety valve and a safety net for Aaron when you've got a weight around there. Believe me, he's one of those guys. I was on another club. I'd try to figure out a way to get him because you can always find a way to fit him into your club. Look, the Yankees want to get distance from Tyone today. They want him to develop into a pitcher that they can trust. But they've also got an off day tomorrow. And because their starters have given them so many innings, they have a pretty rested bullpen. If you're Aaron Boone in that dugout today, how do you balance between wanting to make sure that Tyone goes out there and gives you a representative outing, but also knowing you can pick up that phone and you've got some big arms out there? Yeah, I think other than the relationship and the karma on the club, I think one of the manager's biggest job is the constant juggling of the bullpen now they don't have enough work now they've got too much work now this and this is with an eight and nine man bullpen that they have in today's game but but yeah I think you sit down every day with your pitching people you go okay what need can we serve for our bullpen today if the game allows us this is something we need to get done this is something we need to stay away from and Jack with this off day tomorrow you got to make your decisions today so 
you know, there's probably a couple of guys he'd like to get in there today, but uh, Tyon, they hope, makes it tough on them. Well, Buck, we're going to see you again on the post game. We'll let you go for now, but free the Bassett Hounds for now. We'll see you in about three hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bob, y'all take care. All right, you too.